Hey everybody. So my husband's out there mowing the lawn right now and I really have to say this because it's like putting everything together that I've been researching and finally having an actual argument that combines everything that I've talked about. So you see the bigger picture. Okay. So I know my hair looks crazy, but at this point I don't care. So, um, because I, I don't like saying this stuff when my husband's like downstairs or whatever because I just want him to just get my 100% attention for the most part unless I absolutely have to say stuff. And so if he is off doing something that I can just say this without feeling self-conscious or like, you know, I mean, it's one of those things. So anyways, so the cures market leads to fertility and then the rape of the body, mind, and spirit. Okay. The cures market. That's why I said that cures are deadly. Cures are deadly, especially in a dynamic environment. Well, what's a cure? Anything that tries to take away the pain and suffering from somebody's life, whether it's vasoconstricting or vasodilating, causing hormones to be forced to be produced against its will because, or it would have produced it. So, you know, people should be eating food and the food should be helping them release and them helping themselves release um, through different methods that aren't like uh, forcing the internal system to do stuff. You're actually manipulating different orifices that aren't taxing the immune system, taxing your body, mind, and spirit, whatever. And so anyways, when you're forcing your body to do things against its will, whether it's taking drugs, whether it's getting surgeries and being under the influence of a type of roofie and anesthesia where you wouldn't ordinarily undergo that situation if you were awake and conscious, but you have to be unconscious to get destroyed and hurt by the system. Those cures are deadly. And what happens is when you do damage to your body, it develops offspring. And then eventually either it's a cancer disease or chronic illness, or it's a baby. Okay. And so for me to then finally put it all together, so I've been saying this, that the medical system and the holistic system and the energy healing world all work together. <sighs> they all work, they're conjoined together. They work together. And so cures lead to fertility and then the rape of the body, mind, and spirit. All right. And so I just get a lot of confirmation. And what's my confirmation? Well, all right. Fertility was meant to be deadly, even when it was trendy. Aggressive amounts of fertility was meant to be deadly. Excessive growth in the population is deadly. That's why we're in the Georgia Guidestones, where it says, be not a cancer on this earth, leave room for nature, leave room for nature. Because when you are reproducing so much at the sexual level, you're developing a cancer on this earth called huge families, called large populations. And then that does lead to eventual human extinction. And so when you take that to the micro level where people are getting cancer, disease, and chronic illness and or dying from childbirth or kids are dealing with SIDS and SADS, there's sudden adult death syndrome, there's sudden infant death syndrome, then that's because the body reproduced itself out of existence. It kept weakening the genetic line as it kept reproducing, dividing and dividing. And what happens when you keep dividing something, when cells keep splitting over and over and over again, remember the hay flick limit, you have at least 50 times redoubling itself, but then that's when it has to go to the next immortalized germline cell. So why does that entropy then turn into another downline, another like downline of, um, of new immortalized germline cells? Because the person isn't keeping up with the level of entropy. So if you're going to have entropy because you're having the whole, what is it? Uh, energy conservation. You have to then negate entropy with negentropy. That's the opposite of entropy is negentropy. When you're actually keeping up with the level of entropy, it's kind of balance. And so so that goes with the laws of thermodynamics and you're always in deficit. That's why you don't want to keep reproducing so much, especially in dynamic environment. 
And so there, so that, so there is your case against the BACCINES is because they were, they were made to be developing antibody offspring. So every single time you activate your immune system through the therapies market or you disable it from trying to release, either way, whatever your intention is to activate it when your body isn't ready and that's through the therapies like public health therapies or crowds of people or climate change or when you stop your body from releasing because you don't want to feel the pain of release, well, what happens is then you develop offspring and those offspring work against you. See, it's one thing to develop offspring where it works for you, and then you can mature that offspring to work for you, and it has a job like in your body, your heart, lungs, and, and liver, and all that. But what happens is people hold opposing offspring inside, and it turns into cancer disease, chronic illness, autoimmune disorders, and also a baby. And then it also dilutes the parent cells. So that's the whole thing with reproducing so much, and the cells split so much, they don't keep up with the level of energy that needs to be conserved because every single time a cell splits, it loses energy. It loses substance. That's the whole thing with thermodynamics. Energy can't be created or destroyed, only converted. And through every conversion process, you lose energy, you lose substance, you're in deficit. And then you cannot be cured in a dynamic environment. And if you're trying to be cured in a dynamic environment, then eventually that will turn into zero Kelvin. Okay, zero Kelvin, satanic shit, whatever. This thing, you know. And so, yeah, so there is your case against the VACCINES because they were made to be developing antibody offspring, fertility, even if you didn't sexually re reproduce, that was a case for cancer. Developing offspring called antibodies for protection was the, was the tagline. That was the selling point in the VACCINE industry, as well as the herbal industry, the therapies industry, of course, thinning your blood, taking all the different remedies to thin your blood, aspirin, NSAIDs, whatever, ibuprofen. So you didn't have the strength to deal with excessive growth or fertility because you didn't condition your blood vessels to deal with expansion and contraction and you also withheld food so you didn't reinforce your blood vessels to be able to 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 to, to grow with the growth in your body especially during climate change that's why all the diet suddenly if you're going to attack the VACCINE every healer out there will also be subject to the same scrutiny so all your healers out there energy healing selling you everything under the sun should it also be under the same scrutiny as the VACCINES? Every remedy develops an offspring, even if it's a new cancer or a virus. Your whole medicine cabinet needs to be thrown away. Even the holistic store with all their supplements and remedies. Excessive growth, that's called cancer and disease. If that is deadly in the body, can you imagine what it does to society and Mother Earth? Now look at your population, people who are doing criminal activity, people who are bullies, people who can't handle air, food, and water, people who are telling everyone to starve themselves, okay? The baby boom was intentional. That's why Generation X called baby busters, and we were the variables. The system had to redirect, but they had to do all the experiments. Many of your parents have been under human experimentation back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Of course, alcoholism and drug addicts came out of it because they were suffering so much, just like you are today. And of course, many fertility drugs and experiments, they were probably not aware which is why you see the breakup in the family. Great grandparents and grandparents didn't even know what the medical system was doing. They just went to their doctor. If you can't forgive your parents, just understand why they had no idea the world they came into. Okay, they had no idea the world they came into. All of it was intentional with experiments. Some people were part of this, the system reorganizing the path. Don't get mad, just survive. But if you are highly sexual with the need to have a family, chances are you have been experimented upon and made to be very fertile and, of course, pass away with weak children if you happen to get pregnant. Some people don't get the luxury to be pregnant. They get cancer or they die during childbirth. You're watching it now. The system sped up the intended outcome. That's climate change. Aggressive sexuality was meant to be deadly. Remember, you have a choice now. Once you get past this information, you have a choice now. This is the first major step if you can even consider this information. Because if you can't consider this information to be credible, you'll think what's going on now, even in the past, is all part of God's plan. If it's going to blow your lid off, it is going to blow your lid off when you realize it was man's plan. That's why you don't urge your children to have families because they may not survive the future. Even though you expect people to die, it might be sooner than you expect. So when someone says, oh, look, my new kid, I'm like, oh, God, I wince when people are celebrating new children coming into their families. I wince because I know what's in it for them. They're not going to change the way they do stuff. You know that family is going to keep doing the surgeries, the supplements, the detoxes. They're going to do all the prescription drugs. They're going to have things vacuumed out of their children and whatever else. 
They can't handle pain and suffering or food, so you know what's going to happen with these kids because look at the parents. And the system is going to speed up those intentions. Before you had longer wavelengths, so you had a chance to redirect whatever intentions that were out there. But now with the shorter wavelengths, with climate change, these kids and parents are not going to have a chance to redirect. So any new kid that comes onto the market or comes into the families, they're subject to a shorter lifespan once the system figures out how to pull the resources out of them if they even survive their childhood. Which is why the system was urging women not to have children. Because they know how deadly it is if it continues. And so if the system knows how deadly it will be in the future, they make sure the future comes fast so they can redirect it. If you allow things to happen the way Mother Nature intended, all-out human extinction. The left-wing world was not as evil as some people claim it to be. Maybe they tried to explain it to you, but maybe they didn't. I was raised left-wing, and I never had anyone explain the things the way I've explained it. So the fact they didn't explain it correctly can seem evil, but even the right wing forcing the girls to have babies, that's slavery to those poor girls. Maybe we had to find out the hard way and figure it out ourselves. Man had to get involved to save the human race. You have to know this. Having a family is a death sentence to that family and that child and that mother and that father. So when I see people celebrate having a baby, a new baby in the family, I hope that child does not suffer too much. I hope that mother survives. The mother's life is the most important, and she doesn't have to. She if she if she and if she doesn't have any kids, every woman is a mother to her juvenile offspring in her body, which is why you see the third world sell remedies to everyone on on the internet because they will destroy themselves, because the system already saw what happened with us. Just look at your friends and family. So we should be an indicator to the third world in Africa what not to do. But guess what? People are doing over there in the third world. They have people in the third world. With the shamans and the herbalists and the religious people selling people herbs and extracts, big families you already see it in Africa. We have people who are under fertility drugs in Africa with three or four or five, six, seven kids and twins and all that stuff. And everyone's like, "Oh, that's so great." No, that's the pathway to eventual annihilation. The system knew how to use fertility and big families to annihilate the people that are undesirable, and people choose it for themselves. They buy into the religions, the politics, the science dogmas. And so then, with all the herbalists and the and 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 all the the surgeons and the sur- and the people who are always under mass amounts of surgery, are essentially getting raped under the influence, under like roofie type of thing, anesthesia, having torture done to their body. So yeah, we're still living in the in, in the Middle Ages. We're torturing people, okay? And so yeah, the use of fertility drugs in the 1940s, they were using like metformin. They were using so many different things in the 1940s, and of course, it caused other issues. You saw that in Hollywood, but maybe you didn't make correlation equals causation because of some of their factors. But even the 1940s, the skinny chicks, and then the men are so like aggressive, and yes, talented, and you had the reefer madness and all that. And so, so the use of fertility drugs, even the 1940s, yes, women have been the victim of so much experimentation to understand how to develop the perfect prototype of a person. Do the ends justify the means? I guess if you get the result that is extremely desirable. So I haven't had a. Pre- I'm not. Uh, um, I haven't been pregnant. Well, I have, but I did an abortion a long, a long time ago when I was like 19 or 20. All right. So whatever. That is what it is. But I have no kids. I have no period. That's what I'm trying to say. I have no period. Um. No period. I feel amazing. I went out yesterday and ate food and was out in public. I wasn't in a large crowded room in a hot day, but I was in a, a restaurant that had people in it and it wasn't, re- it wasn't crowded. It was relatively low key and I was fine. All I did was blow my nose a little bit this morning. I was fine. When I was in there at the restaurant, I was eating food. I didn't eat too much. I didn't eat too little. I was making sure it was kept very low key and calm because whenever there is an, an, an energy shift, from going from one environment to another, you feel it in your heart. Then you have to, every time your heart beats really fast, you have to keep feeding that energy because it's a hamster wheel going a little bit faster. And so, so, so I feel great and I'm, I'm in menopause, but I don't have any kind of issues at all. None. But it's when the climate changes, I have to then adapt to that climate. I have to eat for it. I have to rest for it. I don't try to resist it. I don't try to like, burn through it like people are with all their supplements and detoxes and whatever else. And so, um, so yeah, I know a lot of ways. And, and I had a ruddy complexion yesterday. I had the sanguine. I wasn't all love, 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 but I was kind of happy. So you saw the little bit of the redness, which is, which was the flushed cheeks. 
And I was smiling in a freaking picture yesterday. That was like a little uncharacteristic of me. I don't smile in pictures. And so anyways, do the ends justify the means? I guess if you get a result that is extremely desirable, which is a peaceful person who pays their bills, who doesn't bully anyone, who's able to be out in public without causing a scene or doing having issues. I'm not taxing the system with, you know, drugs, alcohol, and sex, and craziness. And I mind my own business. So that's the system wants. Someone who is who doesn't do drugs and, and all that stuff, right? And so, well, the system has perfected its hormonal control over women and men. That's why I stay away from the holistic market and the medical system. I stay away from healers. I'm not a healer. I'll respect you as a person if you claim to be a healer because you don't know any better. But the profession is a killer. I respect life too much to be a healer. But the system had to do what it had to do to get what we are to get where we are today. It is time to end the healing games because popular healing is deadly at this point. Who I feel sorry for are the children who were born today and even prior generations and they never asked to be here. And you hope they have a great life, but you're kind of, but you kind of know how, you know, and see the writing on the wall. Future generations are going to suffer a lot, if not now, especially the family, if the family does not change. Okay, so the devastating effects of, of a 1940s wonder pill haunt women generations later. Absolutely. People still do the same thing over again, expecting a different result. They're insane. People are insane. History of fertility and fertility on future generations turn into cancer, disease, and disabilities, as well as premature death. And so in 1978, initially human chorionic gonadropin was used to trigger ovulation because it is a physiological homolog homologist to luteinizing hormone, which increases rapidly in a natural cycle to trigger ovulation. So somebody said a while ago that they didn't have a period until they were 19 because they thought it was weird. They didn't have a period. They were very healthy, lived out on the farm. And so they told her mom, I didn't have my period. I'm 19. I don't have my period. Mom's like, oh my God, there's something wrong with you. She goes to the doctor. She gets, she gets started of the destruction, fertility. And so when you're born into society, it's all about fertility, not being fertile is looked at as wrong. And so then people chase death. That's the thing. When you're born into a death society and then you're all about life and that's not how society works, you'll chase death because that's what you know. You'll think death is life. Too much fertility causes cancer in both men and women. Early use of fertility drugs during baby boomer generation, 1950s. In the 1950s, doctors prescribed... DES, a synthetic estrogen, medication to pregnant women to prevent miscarriages. DES was sold under many brand names and was commonly prescribed to women who had fertility problems or who were at risk of miscarriages. However, the FDA eventually notified healthcare providers that DES should not be prescribed to pregnant women. DES is now known to be an endocrine disrupting chemical that can cause potentially cause cancer, birth defects, and other developmental abnormalities. Other fertility drugs, human chorionic gonadotropin, trigger ovulation, thalidomide, sold under the brand name Distival, Tensival, Valgrain, and Asmival. This drug was produced in the United Kingdom in 1958. Other fertility drugs used today include clomid, clomiphene, citrate clomid, or metformin, which is used for diabetics, which then I can see why someone that I know from the past who had issues with fertility get diagnosed with aggressive diabetes, get on the drugs, and now they're all fertile. They have a kid. I knew there was a connection. I knew there was a connection. And so, yeah, injecting people with cancer without their consent. You can read that YouTube, watch that YouTube video. It's not happy 420 yesterday. You're just forcing your body to produce happy feelings, basically against its will. That's basically the medical holistic energy healing world. Forcing those dopamine and serotonin receptors to produce more than it can afford. It will suck the life out of you. People are falling apart because of marijuana, especially in this environment. Not only does marijuana thin your blood, making your blood vessels weaker, but they also put you under a haze under the influence so you don't feel the danger you're in. And people are also developing opposing forces within, aging them faster. That's what all types of antibiotic addictions and remedies, even probiotics do. They develop some kind of life in the body. However, what kind of life are you developing within their body? Especially if you don't know how to release those demons. Very influential opposing forces can convert healthy cells into cancer cells. Just like when someone converts you from Judaism to Christianity, that must have been one hell of a storyline. 
Yes, even healthy cells can be converted to be cancerous and vice versa. That's why people die. They were overwhelmed by opposing forces. They hosted those opposing forces within, and they justified it with their lifestyle and belief system. And, of course, resisted any new information, kind of like homogenous Midwestern towns that don't like strangers. I can speak from experience. In this environment, you cannot afford to keep taking away your life force. In this environment, you cannot afford to keep working for free. You would never work for free for your employer for free. Why would you think your body would work for you for free? Well, what do I mean by that? Because you're supposed to eat food, all food. You're not supposed to starve yourself. And then what happens is when you're taking antibiotics, herbal remedies, detoxes, taking food away from you, it's like you're working for an employer who not only hurts you in the process of you working for them, but they also don't pay you and they hold you hostage. They don't allow you to leave work. You have to live on the property that you work in. That's what people do to their bodies. They force their vital organs and they force their hormones to produce against its will. They also stop their hormones and their body to release against its will. Then they withhold food from themselves. They're saying food is poison, so that essentially they're saying they want their body to work for them, but basically for free. Well, what happens when someone doesn't get fed, they don't get paid, they're not allowed to leave, and they're getting hurt in the process? What happens to your workers? They die. They fucking die. That's what you're doing to yourselves when you enter into the medical holistic energy healing world. You're basically a slave. You treat your body like a slave. You treat your children like a slave. You treat everyone around you like a fucking slave. And you wonder why the morgue and the diet suddenly are like astronomical because people treat their body like slaves and they disrespect their body. They disrespect their friends and family and they have no respect for life. And they wonder why the system is helping them agree with them by giving them every access to all the easy drugs and all the easy distractions and pleasure and paradise. And why are the kids dying suddenly? Because mom and dad disabled the kids immune system by cutting everything out, using elderberry syrup and all the different remedies, Theraflu, NyQuil, and then using vacuums to suck things out, using enemas to suck things out. They don't teach your kids how to cough, sneeze, and blow their nose. They say that all food is poison, so now these kids are only relegated to gluten-free, everything free except for celery and air sandwiches and soy. These poor freaking kids are starving. And so that's the diet suddenly because the money that you made at your job didn't go to your body. It didn't go to the food supply. It went to pleasure and paradise, drugs, alcohol, and crazy sex, and baubles, and these poor kids are dying suddenly on the field playing PlayStation, wherever. <sighs> to wish for a cure is to wish death upon yourself. Wishing for plant-based medicines as cures is also wishing death upon yourself. Wishing death upon one's family. In climate change and everywhere else, cures are deadly. This time in between each diagnosis, the time in between each diagnosis, which is evolution, is shorter and shorter because the climate keeps changing. It's more noticeable in some places than others. All types of symptoms are a type of evolution. It is a change that must be supported with food, not remedies or cures or distractions. During climate change, you cannot afford another cure because sooner or later, the, la the latest cure will be the straw that breaks the camel's back. That's called diet suddenly. Sometimes that happens to babies from mothers who have exhausted her resources to handle another freaking cure. That was SIDS, now SADS. All cures are extremely deadly in a dynamic environment. And even before it was dynamic, it was just heating up. So even though 50, 100 years ago, you didn't see as much cancer, but as people kept reproducing, and then, of course, more reproduction adds more electricity, adds more devices to the system, causing energy to rise, causes more growth, it causes then people to reproduce even more, thus diluting the, the genetic line, causing more cancers and disease, and now you have an explosion of diet suddenlies when the system then has to go and control that situation. They have to actually accelerate the future and then try to redirect it. And that's what's going on right now because people don't want to fucking change. They're not going to say, well, I don't want to have a family. They're going to want to be like their mom and dad. They want to copy their mom and dad until it's all out family extinction. And so all cures are extremely deadly. You don't want to wish for a cure, especially not now. Those who want cures actually need food. 
Every single pain is evolution. It must be supported with food, all food, milk, meat, cheese, eggs. Every single diagnosis is an evolution. Every single symptom is an evolution. It must be supported with food. Cold and flu season and spring allergy season are the two evolutions that people attempt to be cured in. Over time, all those cures and resisting evolution works against you. That's called dead suddenly, even at 90. To wish for a cure is to wish death upon yourself. I'm serious. During climate change, cold and flu season and spring allergy season can happen twice a week. It's happening today. We're in 30, 40 degrees right now, and it was like 80 or so just a couple days ago. That's why people are dying suddenly. Every single time the climate changes, even within a week, people get sick or feel pain. People get a cure. They resist evolution. They get closer to death. People are dying younger and younger and younger and younger. That's why the system hasn't found a cure for whatever cancer and you think they're hiding it from you. No, they will keep taking the same plant-based materials and reconfiguring it and developing another concoction that will inevitably not work and then get recalled because you're not supposed to be cured. Your body is dying to live and you actually keep hurting it and destroying it it's ability to retain and release, and of course, purposeful starvation. That's called dieting, which is why the beauty industry is so deadly, impossible expectations, and setting a bar so high that women die for the bar. They starve themselves to reach that bar of social acceptance and desirability, only to get screwed by somebody to death or be forced to have children. That's the only reason why these women starve themselves, so they can be socially acceptable and desirable to be screwed by somebody. You're supposed to eat all food, and food is not poison, especially if you're are not using it as medicine because you can't be cured in a dynamic environment. It's literally impossible. That's why pot smokers are addicted to pot because you can't cure anything. You could be only under the influence until even then the pot doesn't work anymore. The system is not hiding any cure from you. They don't fucking work, especially in a dynamic environment. The more you want to be cured, the more you wish death upon yourself and others. Cures eventually end in rest and peace. The system conditioned you to beg for a cure because you can't handle pain, suffering, and food. The system did it for a reason because you have to be extraordinarily extraordinary to handle pain and suffering in a dynamic environment and not wish for a cure. That's why people are using that's why people were using laundry detergent twelve years ago, like myself, borax, to try to cure their issues. That's why people were using diet to earth or so many things in the industrial supply section to cure their sickness. You can't be cured in a dynamic environment. People are drinking their own fucking pee, okay, to cure things. Below are the physics of symptoms. You have to support energy with food because you will always be in deficit if you're not feeding the energy the environment isn't influenced upon yourselves. You have to pay your body for the work it must do to support your lifestyle, and belief system, and environment. To starve your body and harm it through the cure system is like an employer who doesn't pay you for your day's wages and then whips you when you try to leave. That was in the 1800s. Now people do it to themselves and their friends and family. What people do to themselves when they don't eat the proper amounts of food for their lifestyle and belief system is like an employer who tries to prevent you from leaving while whipping you at the same time. That's what people do to their bodies. They act like an overseer. It's like an employer holding you hostage and not paying you. People enslave their body, mind, and spirit and then give it away to somebody else to exploit. That's why you must understand the physics of symptoms. All right? Or you'll act like an overseer, whipping your body and starving it and, and still expecting it to work for you. You are a monster to yourself. Okay? And so the physics of symptoms, now, I mean, I could go through all of this, but there is... Uh, there is a physics to it. It's all energy being used up. And so when uh, acceleration is a phase of microbial growth that occurs after a lag phase when cells adjust to their environment. Okay, so when the climate changes and it's either colder or hotter or the particles accelerate, the lag phase is the first phase of bacterial growth when, act, when, when bacteria adjust to a new environment before starting exponential growth. That's all the cancers. It's a temporary period of non-replication that bacteria experience when they are introduced to a new media. During this phase, bacteria prepare for cell division by adapting to stress and rebuilding cellular components. The lag phase is the most unpredictable, most unpredictable aspect for a growth model compared to generation time. This is because the lag phase will vary depending upon the previous history of the organism. Okay? The lag phase is characterized by large-scale transcriptional changes. Within four minutes of inoculation, so this has to do with VACC and ESs, 1,100 gene, genes change expression levels. Within 20 minutes, 1,741 genes ex change expression levels. The nature of the lag transcription depends on the history of the bacterial culture. Okay? And so if you already have deficits and deficiencies and other issues, all of the different inoculations and all the energy in your environment will then accelerate whatever deficiencies and whatever issues that you have. Because you're going to still practice not eating food. You're going to say all food is poison. You're going to take your remedies and surgeries and whatever else. And so during acceleration, the division rates increase gradually and reaches a maximum value. 
So when that division happens and there's nothing left to divide and there's no more energy left to use to cause more division, then you have hyperacceleration can affect microbial growth in three ways. Sedimentation, mechanical deformation, and hydrostatic pressure. Sedimentation is cancer and tumors. Okay? Um, uh, mechanical deformation, temporary changes in the five senses, and phenotypical characteristics, bloating, symptoms, heat, cold, mucus, rashes, headaches. Then you have hydrostatic pressure, symptoms, migraines, bloating, swelling, fluid pressure. All right? And so what people do is they, they try to stop that. And so then you have people who are 49 and 50 who reach their hay flick limit. Think about it. Technically, you have mothers who and fathers dying at 49 and 50. All right? And so, yeah. Um, what else? We're entering into new... And entering into a new pandemic. Um, give me one second. Uh, let's see. Voluntary surgery is torture. Getting a bumper removed from your ass is the system making sure you don't bleed out. Torturing and R-A-P-I-N-G, any unconscious body, is morally reprehensible. Yep, we're still in the Middle Ages. But it's more socially acceptable to torture people and their bodies under the influence or roofied under anesthesia or getting R-A-P-E-D by the invaders called scalpels and surgeons. And even energy healing people and massage therapists and whatever else. Watch my video yesterday. If you can see where I was coming from before, you might actually have to block me because you'll see where I'm coming from now. It's brutal. And yeah, your friends and family are in those industries. So hold on. So cures is like a R-A-P-E because you froze that body and made it unconscious so you can still use it at your disposable. You let the system have their way with you using the cure system. Whenever you cure, whenever you cure your body, you just roofied it. Forcing the body to produce oxytocin or whatever hormone is desired that day or daily. You have enslaved the body and forced it to produce against its will, like the 1860s slavery system. Forcing the body under the knife and called surgery is torturing your cells. They are screaming at you, impaling yourself with injections. Regardless, it's like stabbing yourself voluntarily, torturing your body. Your body will rebel against you. It is happening. When you put your body under anesthesia, you have just roofied your body to get R-A-P-E-D while unconscious because your body would not allow it if it was awake and conscious. Whenever you allow anyone to anesthetize your immune system and you go under the knife or not, feel the body, feel the body release, you have just been consensually R-A-P-E-D'd by the person, place, or thing. You have been roofied. That's also some mothers using elderberry syrup and remedies to freeze the body from release. That's in the holistic world. That's in the mommy and me groups. People do this to their children and family and friends, even their pets. State-sanctioned unconscious existence to be tortured by knives and everything else. A date rape drug is a surgical system and the holistic system. RAPE is when you force a body to do things it was not conditioned to do and against its will. Cures is like rape because you froze that body and made it unconscious so you can still use it at your disposable. You let the system have their way with you using the cure system. Whenever you cure the body, you just roofied it. And so what is rohypnol? or flunitrazepam, that's all the things that are used to, for chronic insomnia, to put somebody to sleep, or for anesthesia, and all that stuff. And so, yeah, yeah. So, that's the thing. I mean, I don't care if you block me, and but I'll tell you, all your friends and family that are in the medical holistic energy healing world, they're making a shit ton of money off the destruction of everyone around you. In the religious world, selling you herbs and extracts and supplements, taking food away from you. In the politics world, and even in the sciences world. Okay? Some of you will block me, and I don't blame you, because you're in the industry. You're making millions and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars supporting that industry. Oh, but they're suffering. Yeah, because of what you have supported for centuries. Okay? And now that we're in climate change and what used to be having a longer lag time in between intervals of change, it's now shorter, which means people are not getting a chance to redirect. When you have a longer wavelength, you have a chance to redirect. 
when you have shorter wavelengths, you can't. It's happening too fucking quickly. That's climate change. That's why you're seeing everyone around you die suddenly because they're not changing the way they do things. They're not relaxing, getting out of the limelight. They're not releasing the demons, eating food. They're, they're still trying to keep up with their friends and family, riding on the high of this energy, burning through their resources faster. They can't get ahead of anything. And then when they get diagnosed with cancer, especially for a, a smaller woman, she's basically pretty much already at stage four. As soon as she gets a diagnosis, she doesn't have any time to do anything. There is no time for treatments for now for women who are skinny, even for bigger women, if they don't get ahead of it and release those demons down there and up here. And so, and so if you can see the correlation that when somebody is under anesthesia and getting cut into and having organs removed, you're part of the middle ages, but this time, instead of being awake while it's happening, they justify it by putting you under basically a date rape drug, roofied. And if that doesn't shock the shit out of you, well, at this point it's too late. Just look at look how much money people are making. Look at the hospital system. How many people are how many people have health insurance? How many people are addicted to drugs? How many people are suffering so ast astronomically and they keep having babies? And they're not going to fucking stop. Why should they? They're free. No one can tell them anything. So at this point, I mean. I can go through and do all the little nitty gritty, nitty gritty details and do all that stuff. But what's the point? People will still go and make their appointments. They will still do what they're going to do. They're not going to change. Why should they? They'll keep getting their operations because they have so much pain and suffering. And so then when they get on a new drug that helps them with that pain and suffering, and then all of a sudden the climate shifts again, that drug and that pain comes back. The drug doesn't work. The pain comes back. They get into another drug, another surgery, until there's nothing left to treat. And then it's hospice. People are digging their own graves. And so, I'll go into more detail tomorrow, I'm sure. I'll go through it a bit more intricately. But I wanted to just get it off my chest because I can't keep this to myself. I mean, my husband's home, yeah. I mean, he's mowing the lawn right now and stuff. But I can't keep this to myself. But if you are in the energy healing world, if you are a medical professional, if you are a surgeon, if you have, if you can, take a closer look at what you're doing. But if at this point, if it's too late for you anyways, it's not going to matter. If it's too late for you to do anything different, you're not going to change. And you'll think, I'm stupid. You'll say that I'm stupid in your head. Because your whole life, your very, your whole life, your very life is predicated upon making sure people get their surgeries, they get their prescription drugs, they're addicted to the supplements. Your very life is predicated on making sure that everyone doesn't understand this information. And when they've made your lifestyle and belief system predicated upon the destruction of others, there's no fucking way people are going to change. And they will never look at themselves. And then they'll say Jillian is the enemy. And so, no, it wasn't Big Pharma destroying. Um, it wasn't Big Pharma destroying the... Destroying the, uh, the holistic professionals. It was the holistic professionals destroying themselves. It was them destroying themselves. And so you see how the system does this, does things, right? They make, they, they try to play both sides off each other. But in reality, the system made sure people had a nice life based upon the destruction of somebody else. And that's kind of how that, that's how the world works right now. But to call it out is difficult when most of your friends and family are in those industries and they're even victims of the industry. They're married to people in the industry. They can't go against their their husbands or their wives or their mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers. They've trapped people, like literally trapped people. And when you try to change or say, hey, I'm going to question this and this is their this is their job. This is what they've spent years and years and years 
in school for, and then you're questioning them, and they're they've been told they are they are God because they have a PhD or a nursing license or they're selling you a remedy or there's some spiritual healer and you're like, mm, I don't think so. Yeah. When you have the mainstream, every having everyone just fall in line like that and then you start questioning that, you have to be so fucking strong to step away from that. But that means you wouldn't get pleasure in paradise because... When you mention this, people are not going to like you. You're not going to be out there, especially not now. So then I'm glad I had the last 50 years to do a lot of stuff and be in that ignorance because it is blissful until it's not anymore. And right now, it's not, I'm not in bliss. Oh, it's a type of suffering, but I can survive it. But at least now I have the words for it. I can finally explain exactly why I didn't ever like the holistic medical surgical system. I understand why they exist. Doesn't mean that I agree with it. Doesn't mean I'm going to support it. But the system programmed people for a reason. They were giving women back in the 1930s so many different types of drugs to get them to procreate. And it's easy to kind of shift it on the war and say, oh, yeah, all the men that come back from war, yeah, I'm sure were randy as hell. And the women were as hot to trot, too, because they were under the influence of so many different types of drugs that was given by their doctors. And some went to insane asylums. Some had to go get electroshock therapy. Some went off the deep end. If others could be controlled through behavior modification and biological modification, great. And that's where you have the drug industry. And then you have the cannabis that was pushed in the 1960s. You had the Christian revival pushed in the 1960s. You had the Charles Mansons. You had the Sharon Tates. You had all the models that pushed sexiness and starvation and Botox and plastic surgery and all the antibiotics and all the, the beauty industry. And push the family as well. <laughs> you didn't stand a chance. And so to literally save yourself, you have to take yourself, you have to surgically, like literally surgically take yourself out and survive that situation. Because you can't, you have to work within the system. And so I had to surgically take myself out, which meant that I had to go through the process of the holistic world. And go through the hell of the holistic world. And then saying the things that I was saying. Getting skewered by everyone around me. So I surgically had to take myself out of the system. I had, to sur I had to literally go through that hell. And it was hell. You cannot escape. You cannot escape the death process without going through hell. That's what hell is. People don't survive hell. So they go rest in paradise or peace or whatever but the system will reward those who follow the party line who part who are part of the depopulation agenda they'll reward those who keep advocating pills and par and, and prescription drugs and supplements and detoxes and that's fine but they have no room to say anything they can't blame the people who are VAXXED and they can't blame the un-VAXXED and they can't claim that they're saving anyone's life in their profession. They can't claim that. Because what's the outcome in your profession in the medical holistic energy healing world? It's called the morgue. So, so this type of information is unpopular. And it will not make you popular with your friends. Because look around you. Look at people, most people in the jelly juice world. Most of them are in the religious world saying that food is poison. They can't handle food. They're all about their supplements and detoxes and surgeries. And I understand. It's true. It's extremely difficult to not only change, but to walk away from what was so secure. And so the power of life is through insecurity. It's knowing that even though you're not part of the energy, holistic energy, uh, the, what is it? 
the medical holistic energy healing world and you're not promoting antibiotics and supplements and creams and and powders and cures and drugs and whatever when you're not, when you're not part of all that well when you're not part of all that you might actually survive you might actually survive but yeah you won't be popular it's easy to destroy somebody just say that you that you care about them you want to take away their pain and suffering that's what this that's why the system is all about love because love is destruction and so that's why I stay away from healers I stay away from spiritual people I stay away from healers spiritual people I'll still respect you as a person but you don't know any better you've been taught by the system to destroy everyone around you even your family and when you've been taught by the system to destroy everyone around you you're not going to change, especially when your paycheck and your very lifestyle depends upon people buying into whatever it is you're selling them. You can't sell pain and suffering to people. You can't sell food to people. Because it has to be FDA approved. You can't sell life to people who are so adamant to destroy themselves. You can't do that. And so to, to live in our society is to not only be humble, but to also become sane which is the absence of doing the same thing over again even in different methodologies expecting a different result and so my world literally my world is the true biophysical immortality world it really is because again I don't take away pain and suffering I go through the process of fluctuation. I evolve with my environment. And so, and that does take an extraordinary person to handle pain and suffering and to release demons and to keep speaking life, not death. Because I'll tell you, even the Bhagavad Gita in the Hindu religion, they talk about the afterlife. Yeah, they're programming death in you. The Bhagavad Gita. Where did I learn that from? Well, <laughs> I watched so many different death shows. Six Feet Under, Grey's Anatomy, Advocating Torture and Surgery. But all the different cultures that are into heavy, heavy spices, into heavy, heavy pharmaceuticals, heavy, heavy remedies. All the different cultures are into sexual reproduction, tantric sex into starving oneself, into vegan and vegetarianism. Yeah, it's about death. It is glamorizing death to such an extent that people can, people are so attracted to death because it's so beautiful. And death is beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's sexual. It's pleasure in paradise. Because that's how the system painted death to be. That's what they want you to, to gravitate towards is the beauty, the words, the flow, hypnotism. And then one day when the system finally desires the amount of death that it is requiring for the human race to live on and not destroy itself, then death will be ugly, not beautiful, and life will actually be beautiful, right? Beautiful. But right now, death is beautiful, and life is very ugly. And that's for a reason. That's why you have these models. That's why you have these gurus out there that look so beautiful and act so beautiful and act so hypnotic. And then you're under a trance. And then you're under the influence. Ayahuasca, all the different shamans out there that are hypnotizing people into a trance. So you can leave this world as peaceful as possible. But one day life will be beautiful, not death. But in this, during this climate change, life is ugly and death is beautiful. That ought to tell you something. Bye.